Hi everyone. In my last video, I would have shown you how to create a table with two columns, and I would leave a link in the description of this video where you can have a look to see the basics of working with tabs in Microsoft Word. And in this video, I want to show you how to create a table that has more than two columns using tabs. Before I begin, I want to let you know that if you're trying to create a column format in Microsoft Word, it's always a good idea to use a table. You can use a table many ways you can use a table by generating the table in excel and then copying it across to microsoft word i do have a video where i can show you how to do that and that is linked in my description um, your other option is to just insert a table right here by going on your insert tab clicking down and inserting a table to the size you need or just any basic table and then you can go to your table layout tab and add columns that you need any additional columns you need or you can also delete what you don't need so let's get started let's say i want to show data for three stores and i want to show how much fruits they sell in a particular week so what i would do first is i would type my column header and between each of my column headers i would type a tab because then i could use my tabs and my tab stops that i place at the top on the ruler to manipulate the alignment of my columns. So I'm going to start with fruit tab store A tab store B tab and store C. If you can't see the tabs that fine, when we add tab stops, you'll see how everything lines up. So my first tab is after the word fruit and before store A. So I will put my first tab stop where I want the column for store A to be. The type of tab stop I use determines the alignment of the data in column A. And because it's financial data and numerical data, a right alignment would probably be best. So I'm going to select a right alignment tab. And I'm going to put it, let's say, about here. So store A will line up to this tab stop. I can do the same for store B and for store C. So now my table columns and headers are generally where I want them to be. If I push my cursor after store C and I press enter, you'll notice that the tabs stay for the second line. So I can simply start typing my data. So we're going to start apples, tab across, and it goes to align with this tab. Let's say it's $100, and tab across is tab B, $200, and store C, $150. Then we're going to go with oranges. We tab across and it's let's say it's 225 cents. We tab across again, tab across again. Right. If I want to manipulate where my data falls and where my columns line up, I just need to highlight the data and move these tabs. Now be careful when you're moving these tabs because if you remove a tab accidentally by moving it too far out, then the whole tab is gone. So just be a little bit careful when you're moving around these tabs, not to pull too far away from the ruler. So let's say my stores had returns. So I'm going to quickly enter some returns. So we tab, put it in brackets, let's say that's $20. We tab again, open bracket, 1950. And then we tab again, and then let's say this store had returns of $15. Right? What you'll notice is that my data is aligned to the right, but my numbers look a little bit askew because of the decimal points. Decimal points are not lining up as these numbers are in brackets. 
So when we're aligning decimal points, it's always good to use a different tab stop, which is this one here. This one will center your information, but around your decimal point. So let's remove our right align tab stops and replace them with our decimal tab stops. So we're selecting our data that has decimal points in it. And we are removing the right tab and replacing it with a decimal tab. And then we will just adjust the alignment of our headers. So that's all your data lined up. The challenge with using tabs is adding borders and lines. So for example, on your total line, you're going to want to add a line underneath and a line on top. And if you're not using a table, it gets a little bit challenging. So if you've reached this far and you're having buyer's remorse and you want to start using a table, it's not too late. You can highlight all of your data. Go on to your insert tab and you're going to see a table drop down. Click on convert to table. It'll ask you how many columns you want to have in your table. One, two, three, four. And the number of rows are automatically there. And they're going to ask us what they want to separate the text using. And it's already set to tabs. Click OK. And it's converted to a table. So apart from copying across a table into Microsoft Word, there is a way for you just to copy across data and use tabs to create the columns instead. So let me show you how to do that now. So I have the information here. I just copy it. And I come across and paste it. Instead of it pasting as a table, I can paste values only. And it comes up like this. So now I can continue to highlight my information and put my decimal tabs where I want my columns to go. And then I can highlight this at the top, the headers, and put those where I need them to go as well. Here, one here, and one here. So in that way, we've achieved pretty much the same thing that we had previously, um, except now we've just copied the data from Microsoft Excel instead, in case you don't want to work with a table in Microsoft Word. So in my next video, I want to show you how to format a table. If you've been shying away from using tables in Word because it's been challenging for you to format and to manipulate, then my next video will be for you, where you can actually see the tools and tricks available for you to get your table to look exactly how you want it to look. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.